Hello, Lethal Nation. Welcome to another episode in our Sika System series. And what is the Sika System series, Wayne? Well, I'm going to do a little product review for you guys today, and then you are going to get to check a hunt out at the end of this episode and watch me use the product in action. Now, what are we talking about today? We are talking about the Sika Gear tool belt. And if there's one word I could use to describe the Sika Gear tool belt, it would be versatile. So let's get into some of the features of the pack and why I call this one of my most versatile packs in my arsenal. It's great for self-filmers. It's great for saddle hunters, and it's great for guys that are running and gunning. The first thing you'll notice about the pack is it's a hip style pack, nice backpack straps on the pack, which are actually removable and can be stored inside the pack. I don't recommend removing them. If you put any kind of weight inside this pack and you're packing in a lot of things, it kind of will sag down on your hips if you're not using the backpack straps. So I have left them on there all season long. Now let's get into some of the features of the pack and then we'll talk about how I used it in different situations. Number one, it's got a really nice rucksack on the back which I've used saddle hunting, which I'll get to in a minute, along with early season, stuff a hoodie in there. If it starts to get a little chilly in the evening, take your hoodie out and utilize it. Late season, right now, I'm stuffing my Fanatic bibs down in here, along with my Fanatic vest. Hiking back to where I need to be, then I can take them out, put them on when I get to the tree stand, and I'm not burning up when I get there because I'm wearing all this gear in. Second thing you'll notice about the pack, nice large opening on top, with internal pockets inside. We'll get to why I like that in a minute as well. Two drop pockets on the side that are removable. There's two pockets behind them, straps on the side that you can put antlers on. There's straps on the bottom where you could strap sticks, as well as a bow holder pocket on the side. And two zipper pouches on each part of the waistband, along with a wind indicator bottle holder. Now, how did I utilize this pack? I'm gonna tell you the first thing that drew me to this pack. It is very hard to find a pack that'll hold your camera securely if you are into self-filming. This is an excellent pack for self-filming and I'm about to show you why. What I would do, put my camera body in the big portion of the pack. Right here, it's protected. Nice solid back on it and I would store other things. I got a grunt call in there, as you can see in the front, and I would put like my microphone or my remote control in there. The pockets right here, water bottle holders, I call them drop pockets. They're great for dropping your gear right into. As you can see, GoPro camera right here, boom, right in that side. I got a release over here as well. I can put that in one of these pouches here, or I can drop it right into my drop pocket. On my side pockets, I've been keeping things like my knives, things that I don't access the whole time of the hunt in those pockets. The things that I need and need to access, I'm putting right in these drop pockets. So, camera body here and utilizing the drop pockets. Now, let me show you something really neat about this pack if you're a self filmer. We already talked, put the camera right there. We're going to take our arm. This is a fourth arrow arm. I've also used a reach arm. And in the video at the end, if you guys stay tuned to the whole footage here, you'll get to see I actually take and drop that right in there. And look at that. My camera arm is hooked to the pack. Now, our shoulder for our fifth arrow arm. Bam, watch this. Right in that drop pocket with still plenty of room to put your tree mount or you could clip your mount that the shoulder goes into on the outside. So we have our camera here. We have our arm. Now, early season, what can we utilize this for? My saddle. Saddle hunters, you can, like I said, right here, I got antler strapped on the bottom right now. You can strap your sticks right on the bottom of there. But one of the cool things that I really like to do early on, especially when I was riding my bike in, things like that, is I would take in this back pocket here, let me hang it up, and it'll be a little easier for me to show you guys so I can work with both hands. But little tab there to hang it right on. What I would do, going in early season, even late season, I don't like walking around in the saddle. I put that saddle right in there, and as you guys can see, boom, just like that, it's ready to go into the woods. Let me put it on my back here and show you guys how it fits. I have, right now, my saddle, my camera would be in there, my arm, everything I need to go in and saddle hunt with my stick strapped on the bottom, or you can carry your sticks in separate. There you go, nice and ready to go. Now, saddle hunt situation, I would go in, 
put my strap around the top of the tree once I got up in my position and I can easily, what I would do is take one shoulder out, pull that right around to the side so I'm still wearing it and I can take my parts of my arm out, obviously, put all them up, take that out, slide that right in as I'm standing up here in my saddle and ready to go. Now there's a few ways you can put it in the tree once you get up there. There's a hanger here on the back. There's a hanger on the top that you can hang from. Or one of my favorite things to do, if you want to be able to access everything, it's got this nice big hole in the top here. You can hang it up just like that. And then what I was doing at this point is taking these two portions. Obviously my saddle wouldn't be in here. So let me pull that out real fast so I can show you guys. Take the saddle out. And then what I would do is I'd hang it up like that while I was saddle hunting. Like I said, this can be the same way for some guy who's running and gunning, using a hang-on stand and things. But you can take this excess and stuff it right up back in there behind or wherever you want to. There's a pouch where it can go into. But what I would do is fasten that right around the tree, just like so, and then pull those straps tight. And I could either have it like that, or you can take that off of there leave it closed and it'll hang itself right in the tree and I can access a lot of things while I'm still in here saddle hunting and that's what you'll see in the video I actually had it lower in the position lower on the tree so there you go guys a lot of nice pockets on the inside of the pack that's the sick of gear tool belt very versatile great pack on the back there to put clothes in put your saddle in and for you self filmers man it's great for carrying your camera body right in there and it's not going to get damaged or anything else and like I said you can use these bottle holder drop pockets and also pockets on the inside there tons of storage on it for as small and compact as it is now let's get to the episode and watch us use our sick of gear tool belt in action feet up in the air in my trophy line tree saddle now guys I'm standing on my mission platform and I use four of my mini sticks to get up this high now this is this is all new to me never filmed a hunt out of a saddle let alone a self filmed hunt out of a saddle so we're over that place that you guys all know so well that I like to call the killing grounds plenty of does over here to put a little meat in the freezer but there's always that possibility or an opportunity that a decent buck could walk past.
he pointed out there, 30 yards. Just not what I'm looking for. He went off to the side over the other corner of this field here, had that spike following him. We still got some does out there working their way down this direction. What happens here a lot is these deer bed and they're sticking on the sides to work it under the field, work through the center of the field, and they go out through the corners. So I'm hoping that those that are out there work their way down here and we might just have to put a little meat in the freezer. you all know pretty well that I like to call the killing grounds. It's a place where we take a lot of does out. And you know what? I've been watching so many bucks go past. And I had this buck come in tonight. Eight point. He was right out here. 30 yards. And you know, it, it, they're not gonna, you're not going to shoot big bucks by shooting these two and a half year old deer that have a ton of potential. He's a nice mainframe eight. And you know what? I let him go. He walked off to the side and I decided to take the dough instead. And that, my friends, is how you get lethal. Well, that is 100% definitely what we like to see. But you know what, guys? It ain't going to be much of a blood trail follow here tonight because she's laying up there in that hedgerow. You guys almost got to see her down on film. You know, Grim Reaper's slogan isn't follow the blood trail. It's watch them drop and it was so close to her going down on camera she kind of ran straight up there and then she stumbled back a little bit she fell right into that intro but we walk up there well there you go guys another successful hunt for lethal injection outdoors hardcore bow hunting TV. I want to thank Don and Larry up at Autumn Sky Outfitters for setting up the Matthews VXR so it could do exactly what it was supposed to do. Put big old Grim Reaper size holes in the side of this dough so we could get a little bit of meat in the freezer. Thanks for checking out this self-filmed hunt out of the trophy line tree saddle. I'm up there just swinging around, having a good time, and getting lit.